I recently saw a phrase that I see and hear all the time that never sits right with me. And it was the comment, it was commending this teacher or preacher that they really make the word come alive. Not to be a buzzkill, but there is not a teacher or preacher on the planet that can make the word come alive. Let me explain what I mean. If anybody were to come to me right now and ask me how to get started in preaching or how to do it well, the first thing that I would tell them to do is to become convinced of the inherent power and ability of the word and pray that they would get a revelation of that truth. I'm dead serious. I would not go into technique. I would not go into study habits. I would not give them a concordance. I, there's nothing that I would do before I would do that one thing to tell them, become convinced of the inherent power and ability of the word and pray that God would give you that revelation. Why would that be my first order of business when it comes to telling somebody how to preach or how to preach well? Because without that revelation, without that truth settled in your heart, you may try to make the Bible relevant, or you may try to make the Bible compelling. You may even be tempted to try to make the Bible come alive. Here's the issue. The Word of God already is alive, and there is no teacher and no preacher on the planet that can make it come alive any more than a doctor could say he resuscitated you by taking your temperature at the doctor's office. The Word is alive on its own. I recently had a conversation with a good friend of mine who is also a pastor who preaches on a regular basis. And we were just talking about, uh, he, you know, he had, he had experienced, he watched another church's broadcast. He's just kind of, you know, looking around and he, he said, by the end of it, uh, the whole message, they had not touched the Bible once. And what, uh, uh, unfortunately what happens in the West. And one of the things that we have fallen prey to, um, is this idea that, uh, we basically present on Sundays like a TED talk with a couple of Bible verses tossed in. In fact, that was basically my friend's exact words. And it, and it pinpoints a problem that we have, that we think that preaching and teaching is just kind of the transfer of information, but nothing could be farther from the truth. See, when I preach, my goal is not to give people a bunch of good information and back it up with some Bible verses. I'm actually preaching the living word of God, that the word does not need my help to be powerful. In fact, my help to try to make it powerful usually stifles the power of it working in people's lives. And I didn't make this up. I am not making this up, this idea that the word is alive. I'm sure you probably know. And it, I mean, if you're a believer, you know this verse, but I did not make this up. Hebrews 4.12 in the ESV says this, the word of God is living and active sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of the soul and spirit of joints and of marrow and discerning the thoughts and intents of the heart. You see what that is saying here? The word itself is alive and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. And then it actually says that the word itself can actually discern right? It, it discerns the thoughts and intents of the heart. So basically the word itself has its own power. It works on the one who is reading it or hearing it. And it has the actual ability within itself to judge and discern. I remember a time as a young preacher, a young pastor reading Romans 1 16 for myself and realizing something like this revelation just dawned on me. When Paul says, he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is is the power of God unto salvation, right? It literally says, I'm not ashamed of that gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation. In other words, the message itself has inherent power. And I felt this, I felt this weight lift off my shoulders and I realized the, the, the weight or the, it is not on me to make this message powerful. This message comes with inherent power. I don't have to be a great preacher. I just have to preach a great message. The message is great on its own. The message is powerful, relevant on its own. It's alive on its own. And it took 
all the pressure off of me. I, I, since that point, it's like if I'm, I could preach to 5,000 people or five people and I feel no pressure on myself to make this word look good because it is good on its own. The message itself, I always say, I'm not a great preacher. I just preach a great message. The power is actually inherent in the word. That doesn't mean I don't strive to be excellent and well studied and all of that. But my goal is not to spice it up to make it better for anyone. My goal is to remove obstacles and misunderstandings so that you can experience the power of the word for yourself. You may think that this doesn't apply to you if you're not a preacher, but that is absolutely not true. This applies to you when you read it and hear it yourself. It is alive. That means we can come to the word with expectation. When you sit down in the morning, you got your coffee and you got the word out. Here's one of the truths that we have to understand when we put that word in front of us. The word itself is is alive. The scriptures are God breathed. They are alive. They are alive. That means I can come to the word with expectation. I can come to the word with expectation. And it is actually my goal not to make this word relevant or to make this word come alive, but to remove blockages and misunderstandings so that I can see it as it is, so that I can actually understand it as it is. And the word itself has the ability, contains the ability to work on me. We always talk about, I need to read the word, but also when you read the word, it is reading you. It is discerning you. It is doing stuff in you that you may never see and never understand. And I could go for hours. I could give you scripture after scripture after scripture that show the inherent power and ability of the word. But we're just going to let the simple truth marinate here. The word itself has inherent power. So my conclusion is that, listen, it's not sinful or it's not wrong in a sense, like morally wrong for you to say that a pastor or a preacher or teacher really makes the word come alive. But I think semantically what it does is it actually reveals something that is a misunderstanding in our modern Christianity. The word itself is alive. And the best teachers, the best preachers on the planet, and the best believers on the planet are the ones that recognize that inherent power and ability and get out of the way as much as possible. Listen, the word itself is alive. The Bible tells us so. The Word of God tells it so. It lets us know. It reveals to us. It is a self-revelation that this thing is powerful. And I don't need to dress it up. I don't need to get cute with it. I just need to give it as it is. And it contains the inherent ability and power to change us, to shape us, to move us. And I pray that even if you're not a preacher, this isn't even just for preachers. This is for everyone that interacts with this word. Become convinced and pray for a revelation and an understanding that this word is alive on its own. And I don't need to dress it up or do anything cute with it. It has inherent power. And watch as that revelation settles in, as, that, as you become convinced of that truth, what a difference it makes when you hear the word preached and when you read the word for yourself.